Uh, welcome again today to uh, AgriScience. Uh, who could read our today's essential question? Yes, thank you so much. How do you properly view a prepared slide using a light microscope? Yeah, exactly. Thank you. Uh, today we're going to talk about not only the proper way to, uh, to handle a light microscope, but also how to adjust it. Now, chances are good you've probably seen this in other classes. Where have you, where maybe have you seen uh, the transportation and adjustment of a light microscope before? Yeah. In my science class. Okay, cool. What science are you in? Biology. Yeah, maybe from a biology class. Um, <coughs> so today, uh, this may be new to a few of you and maybe uh, uh, review for most of you. So let's just talk about um, how to properly transport and set up our light microscope. Now remember, uh, this is a fragile instrument, right? So when we talk about transporting it, we're going to uh, notice that we grip it from the bottom and the uh, uh, from the base and from the arm uh, in order to transport it. Let's have a quick review from yesterday's uh, lesson when we talked about the different components of the light microscope. Um, what are we looking at from the side? What's this part that I just grabbed it from to transport? Yes. The arm. Exactly. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. How about this? Mm-hmm. The base. We adjust these here called the... Where's our cheat sheet? Yeah. What are they? The objective, lenses. objective lenses. Thank you. Uh huh. And we view it through the oh. eyepiece. Exactly. Okay. So now that we've had a quick recap of the different, um, the major components of it, uh, let's talk about the proper way to set it up. Uh, we'll notice that because our light source is an electronic uh, source, we'll first need to um, plug it in. We'll need to adjust our objective lenses. We'll need to adjust our base up and down. We'll need to adjust the amount of light coming into it and then set our prepared slide on it, move it around a bit so that we can uh, see what it is that we're looking through, get a good look at the item, adjust accordingly, and then uh, tear the whole thing down. Okay? So those are the big picture view of where it is that we're heading to. Um, I'd invite you to ask questions as we're going along. Okay? First and foremost, we need to make sure that we're stable and safe around here. Uh, you'll notice that there's not a lot of traffic around this area. When later on you set up your own stations, you want to make sure that people aren't walking by you so that they trip over the cords and things like that. I'm just going to go ahead and um, place this into the receptacle and make sure that I'm free uh, from this so that I don't trip over the cord. Uh, the next step, what do we call this, these again? Objective lenses, you're right. Actually, now that I think about it, I have a handout for you. Um, why don't you follow along as we're going through this? Make sure that I'm matching up with what's written down there. Thank you. Sorry. <coughs> yeah, our objective lenses. Which one do we begin on? Do we want to start out with the largest one or the smallest setting first? Yeah, the smallest setting first so that, um, you know, we wouldn't want to get in really, really close to it and have no idea what it is that we're, that we're looking at. So I'm looking from the side at it and I adjust my objective lens to the smallest setting. Now, my, um, the uh, stage is down quite a ways so that I can remove the clips, place them to the side, and I grab my prepared slide. Now, this is an important part. Do I want to grab the top and the bottom of my slide? No. Why in the world wouldn't I want to do that? You can mess up your sample. Yeah, I can mess up my sample, get fingerprints all over it. It makes it pretty difficult. I want these preserved slides to last for a really long time, right? So I grab them from the side. I place them on the stage very carefully. I place the clips to hold them in place, like so. Again, looking at it from the side, I want to adjust my light source so that I allow the most light coming through. I can see here on our specific uh, microscopes now, the setting is a 5. If there isn't a corresponding number on yours, you can just look underneath of it and I see that the largest hole underneath of it is going to allow the most light to come through. So I have that on the setting to begin with. Okay? I then turn it on to allow the light to come through and take a look through it. Now trick question here, uh, not a trick question but an often confused one, on a singular lens microscope such as this one, do I want to have one eye closed like this or both eyes open? Yeah. 
Yeah, you want to have both eyes open. It doesn't allow for strain. Now, at the end of the day, if you're more comfortable by closing one, that's fine. But generally speaking, it's a good idea to have, um, to have both of them open. I take a look through, and now I can adjust my course adjustment knob, the larger one here, in order to move the, um, the uh, specimen up and down. Now, I get it roughly into focus, and I can see that it's just slightly to the up and right. So I'm going to grab the side of uh, my prepared slide and move it. Remember it's opposite of what you would normally think of it is. So if I want to move it, um, I have to think, okay, how is it going to go in the opposite direction? Okay? And you'll see that when, um, when you're looking through here. So I, I look through here, I adjust it to where it's uh, centered, to where I'm looking, and I once again adjust my course adjustment. Now these don't have a fine adjustment, but on your individual one, if there's a smaller knob, then we call that the fine adjustment, and I can, um, can move around to the finer knob. Um, okay, now it's set up, it's focused. What happens if I want to see it closer, if I want um, more magnification? Yeah, I'm just going to slide my objective lenses around until it, you'll hear it or feel it click into place and I can um, see that now it's magnified at a larger degree. I may have to adjust the, um, the fine adjustment again if yours has it. Again, this doesn't, so I just adjust the course adjustment so that I can see um, the specimen clearly underneath it. Okay, I see whatever it is that I need to see. It's now time for me to tear the whole assembly down. I simply lower, I remove the clips, I remove I guess before I do that, excuse me, I need to move this back to its smallest setting to allow um, for the most amount of distance. I remove the specimen, carefully set it to the side. I turn off my power source, remove these to the side. What I would prefer that you do is remove the cord. I'd prefer that you wrap it around like so. Did you cover them back up? And again, remembering good safety technique that we grab the arm and the base in order to transport them, okay? All right, so today we talked about how to transport uh, safely by grabbing the arm and the base. We talked about how to uh, set up and adjust our, our light microscope uh, and then also how to tear the whole assembly down. What I'd like for you to do um, please turn the handout over, and as best you can remember, uh, on the back of that, draw a flow chart that talks about step one, step two, step three, and so on, about the proper uh, handling technique, as well as the proper setup and uh, disassembly of the light microscope. Questions? Okay, I'll collect those um, once we're finished up. Uh, Know that this leads us well into later on in the class when we take a look at prepared slides uh, in pairs.